things your realtor or real estate agent has no idea about when it comes to real estate investing. That's today's show. Let's dive right in. Hey, everyone. I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. And we are founders of Morris Invest. We're longtime real estate investors, uh, rehabbed thousands of homes, and there's quite a few things that we as real estate investors understand about this business that it's safe to say real estate agents don't know about this business. Now, I want to say out the front, this is not a slight against realtors. I don't want this right. to be a pile on real estate agents episode because it's not at all. But it, there are quite a few things that we're going to lay out in today's episode that they simply don't understand about real estate investing. Am I right? Well, we're painting in broad strokes. I don't want to presume that not all real estate agents know about off-market investing, but I have a real estate license. I come from a family where my mother's been in real estate for 40 years. Clayton's father is a real estate agent. So we know a lot of real estate agents and they don't really deal in the circles of off-market investing in the same ways that we do. So, you know, we have a long history of having real estate in our family, and we didn't learn about the way we currently invest until we found out about it on podcasts. So a lot of times people will say, oh, well, you know, I asked my friend who's a real estate agent about this, whatever I heard on your podcast or whatever I heard you're doing, and that real estate agent said this insert crappy thing here. Right? Right, right. And a lot of times I'm like, yeah, but I don't think most real estate agents don't know this market. And so that's why I thought it would be good to do a podcast like this, because if you've been listening to this kind of information about real estate investing, and then you go to your friend who is a real estate agent whose main business is to sell families, their primary residences, that person probably doesn't know much about buying distressed properties, about turnkey investment, about off-market real estate investment. And so that's why I thought it'd be good for you to hear this so that you then don't go to your friend who just got a real estate license or, you know, or has real estate signs on your local bus. They don't, this is not the same thing. This is like a completely different business. Right. It's yeah. It is. A, it is a totally different business. So often, obviously, real estate agents are working to help you and assist you in your primary residence. But when it comes to trying to find deals that they're going to rehab um, in certain you know neighborhoods that they often don't even go. They don't even, you know, very often real estate investors are hanging out in A-class neighborhoods, right? And they're going after that primary residence, that family that's moving here or wants to move into that fantastic school district. And, you know, Billy wants their son to go to, uh, to the, the, the best academy and so forth. And we're going to take you around and show you all the great restaurants in this town. It's a totally different business than, than actually investing in cash flowing real estate. Now, sometimes you, as you mentioned, they kind of, the lines can blur a little bit. And I've worked with real estate agents in the past when I used to do a lot of wholesale investing and different things. Um, and some of my first properties I did buy through a real estate agent. So sometimes you can find real estate agents that get it, that understand yeah, it. You can. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of times in like you'll go to a, a, a RIA meeting or something and there will be re real estate agents there who are really trying to court investor clients. Um, or sometimes I have a friend who says, yeah, I, I work with an investor. You know, that means her, she's making it her business to make offers on behalf of this investor. And he's trying to get the best deals possible on the open market. And that's certainly possible. That's just not, it's not the same thing though. It's usually just, right? Yeah, it's not the same thing at all. So let's dive into some of the key things that we that some of your real estate investor, your real estate agent might not know. And you know, it's interesting to talk about this because very often the reason we bring in this up because a lot of new investors who are getting started in real estate investing, the first and sort of natural inclination is to go to and speak to a, a real estate agent to try right, to find you think, a property. Oh, that's their business. They must they know. can get me a rental property. Right. And so if you're and I've spoken to so many investors who say this that maybe they live in California and they want to get into real estate investing. So they'll just and they want to maybe do it on the weekend, right? They work a nine to five job Monday through Friday. So they'll call up a local real estate agent. They probably know a local realtor. They're friends with that person in their neighborhood. They've been friends for years and they call up Marjorie and they say, Hey, Marjorie, um, you know, we're, we're, my husband and I are thinking about getting into real estate investing. We'd like to buy a rental property. Where do we start? And that's usually where they start is with a realtor. And that's a natural first place to start. 
Right. So this became really clear to me, though, when Clayton and I were we were deciding that we wanted to find owner financed uh, properties, which we've we've done a whole episode on owner finance. Do you have the episode number, honey? Uh, we'll keep, you, you look it up while I, I'll keep talking. Yeah, honey. I called you honey on our podcast. I love it. Um, that up. <laughs> all right, sweetums. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, so we were, remember we were going through that, we go through phases in real estate, kind of like, um, fashion trends. Mm-hmm. And so we were in, in that phase where we wanted to find a lot of owner finance properties ourselves, which means we wanted to like find people who would, who were willing to let us take over payments or take over on some kind of payment plan in order to come to own that property. We were excited about that. Um, it's a great and, strategy, by the way. It's episode yeah. number 151, episode 151, where we talk about what is seller financing, also known as owner financing. Right. It's awesome. Right. So we were, you know, we were doing that and I decided to go to real estate school. This was about two years ago and I was in real estate school and we were actively employing this strategy. And there was like one column of our book, of our real estate book that had um, just a little bit about you know, that, uh, about this strategy. And it's a huge book like this that we had to study to get a real estate license, but it was one tiny column. And then I I remember the teacher going over it and it took all of 20 minutes and so many hands run up in the, in the room and people were like, why would you do this? And why would anyone do that? And why would, you know, they were talking about, um, a subject to leases and subject to loans and that kind of thing. And no one really understood why, you know, you would do this. And they teacher was like, well, this is not really going to be your business. So, you know, understand what it is and then just kind of move on. And I think that sort of cursory understanding is where it ends for a lot of realtors. Hmm. So, and why would they want to explore figuring that out? I mean, what's the, what's the value in them understanding that? I mean, well, I guess if you did seller financing, you could make a commission, right? Because you'd make your commission on the closing price right? I as just a had realtor. A, a, a good friend of mine, one of our, one, my mentor in this business actually just um, did a seller finance deal. He actually acquired the property with seller financing and he did it with a realtor and he said, well, I wish I knew better because I probably wouldn't have used a realtor next time. I shouldn't have done it that way. So it's actually kind of funny that, you know, you can make a commission on that. And if you know what you're doing as a realtor, yes, you can be involved in that process. Right. If you're bringing two parties together, of course you can. So, I mean, I guess maybe even a good rule of thumb for this podcast is if you've never heard of it, you know, if it's like seller financing or turnkey off market uh, properties, most, most of the time, you know, most realtors don't know much about it either. So, um, you know, be careful where you go for advice because the the problem here is, uh, you know, when you go to a realtor who doesn't like to admit that they don't know anything about it and then they're like, well, that doesn't, that's not how it works. You just, you need to use the MLS. That's the only way to go when it comes to real estate. Then uh, clearly that realtor is being threatened because they feel like their industry is being threatened and they'll give you advice that will stop you from, pursuing great deals. So that that's the reason that I thought this was a valuable podcast to do just so that you consider the source. Right. And another thing too, like when you're on Craigslist, if you're looking for properties or you're out there hunting for deals and you want to do this yourself, I mean, obviously what we do at our company at Morris Invest is do it for you. But you know, if you're out there hunting and you want to rehab properties yourself and find great deals to flip and you, you're into the flipping game, you know, which we're not, but that's something you would want to do. You know, the chances of you working with, and a lot of commercial real estate investors will work with brokers because that's going to be one of the best places that they're going to get access to commercial properties is through brokers. We've had guests here on the podcast that have talked about that. Now, I think there's a huge difference between commercial real estate investing and residential real estate investing when it comes to working with realtors. The ability for you as an investor to get off market properties, whether it's through Craigslist or you're reaching out to for sale by owners Right. There's a reason that people are putting properties out there for sale by owner. They don't they don't they're not first of all, they, they don't think there's a big enough margin. They don't want to pay a realtor their commission on that property. And also, maybe that property's in total disrepair and needs a, a lot of TLC. And a realtor may walk into that house and not understanding the value of that property may say, Holy smokes, I'm not gonna list this property. 
Right. You need to do like $40,000 worth of work in this property. The yeah. Best, the best that I can do is sell this property as is, right? I can sell it as is, put it out on the multiple listing service, um, and that's an opportunity. But why would they then – they could list it as is themselves as a for sale by owner. If they're not – if the, if that realtor is not going to really mm-hmm. want to go out and push it, think about that for a second. A realtor's job is to sell your property. It's to hold open houses. It's to market the property. You ever get those letters, those cards in the mail, you know, where they're the, the big glossy cards that come from real estate agents? That I was say, just looking through our – like yeah, a, like there's one, right? It's yeah. like Marjorie sells properties, you know, and it's got like, here's one we right. just sold on King Street, right? And it's got beautiful pictures and everything. Well, that's not the sold game. Sold for we're this in. much money and well, we can do that for you too. Right. And that's not the game that we are in as real estate investors. We're not buying $500,000 homes with 30 pictures of gorgeous hardwood floors and five fireplaces, right? We're buying like 1,000 nope, square foot. we are foot. not. <laughs> thousand square foot homes they're not going to win any design awards but guess what they're going to cash flow for the rest of your life so realtors are probably not going to be involved in that process there's no way in this world you're going to be seeing a realtor marketing an as-is property on one of those like glossy printed photos like here's this ugly property it definitely needs some tlc look at right. the you know look at the, the the water stains on on the hardwood floors and these old cabinets that need to be ripped out and this old water heater that needs to be replaced so there's a there's a time and a place for a realtor and this is not it some most of the time yeah exactly right and so you know we have someone who you know is like a family acquaintance and so every time my sister's gonna know who this is she every time she hears something on a podcast she's like well i asked so and so and he said you're not gonna make money with this and you know she's got (laughs) just this guy who and he's a very successful realtor but i think most people don't realize the way the pie is split up when it comes to real estate agents. So, you know, if we're buying distressed property that's off market, that means someone has done the calculations and they realize they cannot take five, six percent of the sale price and share it with a realtor as well as pay closing costs, which the seller also pays, as well as pay the taxes on that sale and any kind of closing fees. So if you have a home that's say a hundred thousand dollars, you're gonna pay six percent right of that sale to the real estate agents and they have to split that up into several levels as well so not only are you going to pay closing costs which you know are about uh what do they say 10 10 percent what are closing costs two percent of the sale two percent is usually closing costs um and then you'll pay taxes on on the sale on the gains um unless it's your primary residence uh And then you're also going to pay the realtor fee. Now, the realtor has to share this commission with their broker because that's how it goes. And they have to sell the commission with the buying party as well. And so, you know, this money is getting split up so many times. There's so many pieces of this pie. And so a sale, a seller has decided I cannot afford to sell this on the open market because of all of these other fees that we have to then go through. So, you know, the properties that we find, people have decided, you know, we've marketed to them, we've gone out to find them and said, you know, we want to buy your your house at this much of a discount because then you don't have to pay the real estate agent. And also we pay the closing costs a lot of times. Um, and so that's how we're getting our properties off market. And it's just not something that a realtor deals with. Right. Another area, though, that you may want to work with and understand if you can find a realtor who you can you can teach. Now, in my experience, I've talked to thousands of real estate investors. Uh, There was a time when I devoted, I think, about two months. Do you remember this when I devoted about two months where every day I made it a point to talk to 10 realtors on the phone? Do you remember that? This was another fashion phase for Clayton. No, no, no. It was a I... part of my. It was a part of my building of my list and part of like really strategizing in New Jersey to build up my business. That's I mean, right. I do remember that. Yeah. And every day I had a checklist and I had a list of realtors and I called ten of them per day. Now I got voicemails, of course, but and I got dead numbers. I would call them back. I would ask the office, you know, person for another phone number, and I built up a fantastic network of realtors locally. Um, that w- was able to help me in my investing career. And what I, what you can find and do is when you speak to a realtor, you know, you can simply call them and say, "Hi, this is Clayton. Insert your name here." 
Uh-huh. Um, hi, uh, this is, you know, this is John. Uh, I, I'm a, a real estate investor in the area. Do you want me to play the real estate agent? That would be fun. Okay, okay. You play I'll the real estate okay. agent. And ring, ring. You're ring, taking ring. this call. You're taking this call out of the blue, right? And I'm randomly okay. calling you. Uh, hi, I was trying to get a hold of uh, Mary. Uh, this is Mary. How can I help you? Hi, my name is Clayton. I'm a local real estate investor, and uh, I saw your name actually in one of the you know Keller Williams directories, and I noticed that uh, you you do you work in this county? Do you work in Essex County or Morris County? I do, yes, but I also specialize in uh, Union County as well. I can help you with anything. Oh, good, good, Clayton. Oh, good, good. So, um, so just out of curiosity, um, do you work with real estate investors, or you strictly kind of work with you know first time home buyers that sort of thing? Because I do a lot of real estate investing, fixing and flipping, and those sorts of pro projects, and uh, I'm building up a network of realtors that can bring me deals. Does that sound like something you do, or probably not? Uh, well, yes, I have experience with real estate agents. Uh, I'm sorry, I am a real estate agent. I forgot about that. Uh -huh. uh, yes, I yes, I have real. I have experience with investors. I like doing that very okay. much. Good, good. Well, what's like the last project you worked on with an investor? So you're sort of interviewing the realtor at this point because a lot of it, you know, real estate agents will say that they do, but they don't. They will say that. Yeah, of they will because they want your business. So, oh, really? Tell me about the last project that you worked on with an investor. Well. I like to invest sometimes. <laughs> yeah. See, then you kind of get to the heart of it. But if they do say, well, we, you know, actually one of the investors I work with is a cash buyer. He ends up, uh, he fixes and flips a lot of houses. It, they're going to give you specific answers. They're going to tell you that they like three bedroom, two bath houses in this particular town, that they do this type of work on these types of properties. And right. we actually just sold one on King Street, et cetera. And uh, it stayed on the market for like, you know, three weeks. Oh, how long was that on the market for? What's the market like down there in, in, you know, in that area? Oh, it's pretty good. You know, you're getting a lot of first time home buyers. So that's a great fix and flip market. Da, 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 da. Oh, good, good. So do you ever get, and here's why I want you to talk to realtors and start to develop that because you can help train them. And I don't mean to sound like that they're like a puppy or something, but they might not even know what this means. And you say to them, do you ever get any listings that come into the office? You know what? Other Your, your realtors just kind of pass it around the office like a piece of paper. They're like, look at this ugly duckling. No one knows what to do with this thing. And that person may say, yes, no. You're still playing the role playing here, but you kind of tuned out. Um, well, I don't know what you want me to say. Well, you could say, uh, yeah, we, we get a lot of those, actually. We get some of these ugly duckling properties, and, you know, frankly, they just kind of sit. We don't really know what to do with them. We don't actually end up, end up putting them out on the MLS because we don't know really how to move them, right? Yeah. And right. what I would say to that is that's called, that's called a pocket listing. Now, that's a listing that the realtor basically has in their pocket, and they're not necessarily putting it out on the multiple listing service. There's an opportunity for you to say, hey, if you get any of these pocket listings that you simply don't know what to do with, I'd like to make an offer on them. Would you mind sending, sending them to me? And I'll, I'll give a fair offer. And if the, you know, if the seller goes for it, great. And I'll, I'll be all cash. I can be an all cash buyer, and I'll close quickly. And a realtor, once you frame it that way, a realtor wants no hassle, doesn't want to have to deal with people that need mortgages. If they know right. you're a real buyer, you've got cash, and you can close quickly on a property, boom, it, it works. I mean, it's it's going to – then you're going to develop a great relationship. And it only takes like three realtors. If you call 30 of them, all you know, 27 of them are total busts, and you get three that can actually start bringing you deals and start emailing you deals – then you can start to build that relationship up and start to train them. Because one of the things that they're going to do is send you listings that may or may not be, you'd be like, no, this is not what I'm talking about. And then you can go back to them and email them back and say, no, I'm actually looking for something more in the $20,000 range that needs about $60,000 worth of work, you know, and you can develop that relationship. Yeah. And so a pocket listing, you know, they're kind of frowned upon by realtors because they have a fiduciary duty to get the highest and best offer for their clients. But for some properties, it doesn't work to put them on the open market for whatever reason, right? And so your seller might come to you and say, I want you to sell this house, but I don't want to do any open houses because I raise pit bulls who like to by right. people or whatever, you know, like they're embarrassed of the house. They literally right. don't want people to come to the house. They're embarrassed by it. Or yeah. Or, you know, we have water pipes broken and I inherited this house from my uncle Fester and he didn't take good care of it. 
And so I, I don't live here. I'm not going to have open houses. So then that realtor doesn't want to put that on the open market. And they have to explain to their seller, like, look, this house won't show, or, you know, you're not going to do anything with it. I'm going to try and find you a buyer. And then the seller has to sign a, um, a form that says, we agree that you will not put it on the open market because the realtor can't just take a listing and say, this is ugly, or I think I can take it to an investor and I won't have to bother to market it. A realtor can't do that without the seller's permission. They can't just make those decisions. They would have to tell the seller, I don't think we should list this on the open market. I'll try and find you another buyer. And the seller has to agree to that. So you don't have to worry that then someone is being taken advantage of or the the property should have otherwise been on the open market. There's just, you know, there's so many different flavors of real estate. That's kind of the whole point of this podcast is that there's so many different ways to, I don't like the expression skin a cat. There's so many different ways to peel a banana. Okay. Let's start. Let's make that a thing. Change there are many ways. Fruit. To- there are many ways to peel a banana. She's and really vicious with bananas. I don't know if you know. She's like destroys them on a regular basis. You know, you're, I mean, you can slice them. You can cut them in lengthwise. If you're making a banana split, you can make a banana you, boat. You which mush is them up. You mush kids. them up for the baby with a spoon. Right. I mean, she's vicious with these things. You're, There's a lot there. Are, like I said, there are many ways to serve a banana. I've just changed it again. And so you know, your real estate agent probably only knows the way we all peel a banana, right? Right. And, and that's, that's, that's the way they make money. And that's amazing. Um, and so, you know, if just my point here is that if someone tries to like, you know, what's the expression poison the well, man, you're terrible with idioms. You know what I'm saying? If, if someone tries to say like, you shouldn't do this, this is not the way things are going. Just then say, okay, well, how much do you know about distressed properties or seller financing or any of this stuff, you know, and make sure, again, you consider the source Uh, because we don't want to presume that every realtor doesn't know this, but a lot of them, again, just stay in their lane, which is great, right? It's a great lane. Most of them just stay in their lane. Um, and that's probably not your lane as an investor until you're ready to buy and sell your own primary residence. Right. There you go. So, um, Realtors, they can be useful. You may have to train them. They often probably don't know what an actual return on investment is for a rental property. I guarantee if you ask a, a realtor the question, what is, you know, what is the potential ROI of this rental property that you're sending me as this multiple listing, they're going to say, it's going to be great. <laughs> right? That will well, be their answer. It is on the test. It's on the real estate exam. Well, to understand what return on investment is. I mean, you have a, to calculate it. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the so, ROI on this property? But, you know, there's a lot on that test. It's it's actually a really hard test. And I'm not going to say – yeah, I will well, say it's, it's a hard test. Um, it's not easy to get a real – Yeah. You have to work really hard at it. Um, I know I did, and I, I have a lot of respect for people who have passed that test. Um, but like I said, in all the things – I think I have the book behind me here. Um, it's one of the really thick books on the shelf behind me. And, and, and all of the things that we studied, you know, most of the things that you and I do were only covered in a half a page of that humongous book. It's amazing. Yeah, a lot of laws to worry about, a lot of things to deal with, easements and and what can exist in a property after you move. Can I take the ceiling fan with me? And who What has- is chattel and what is, right. Yeah. There's a lot. What so you say to people when it comes to race and class and gender, and now even what you can put on your Facebook wall, like you would never say like, this is a, I don't know, whatever kind of neighborhood, right? Like for this kind of race, like there's a lot, there's, there's, there's a lot to learn and they work hard at it. Um, but what we do, the reason that we even exist is because it doesn't work for everybody. Right. So, yeah, a lot of respect for realtors. They do provide a great service for helping people. I mean, we, we used a realtor, I mean, to find our properties when we moved in, you know, for our primary residence. So, and we're real estate investors because they understand right. the neighborhoods. They can really help you with a lot of things uh, when it comes to that. Plus, we used a realtor to sell our home um, as well. So, uh, yeah, me, dude. Yeah. Well, 
That's right. Well, no, well, no. That was one of the advantages of, of having my real estate license was that, um, you know, we could sell it through my brokerage and take a, and not take such a big hit on our commission. And you did like a split commission with an actual, one of the other agents in the office who held open houses for the us. The broker and, had to yeah. do it just to yeah. make sure. And we had to make sure that all the sellers knew that, you know, this was coming through the brokerage of the owner and we had to sign disclosures for it. But, um, you know, that, that, paid off having paid having taken that test because um then you know the agent split went to me yeah so there you go we love realtors so and would, yeah. but if you would like a great team that would help you if you're ready to take action and become a real estate investor and you'd like to pick up your first rental property or your second or your third and you want to speak to a great team that's what we do all day all day long so my team our team at morris invest if you just go to our website go to morrisinvest.com Click on the schedule a consultation button. It's there, right there in red, and it's totally free. We'll jump on the phone with you for 30 minutes. We'll see what your situation is, where you'd like to go, how many properties you'd like to acquire over the next three, four, five years, and how you would, what's your plan to hit financial freedom. And we'll get you up and running. We find a great property for you. We rehab it. We place a tenant in the property, and then you are on your way with your first rental property. So come visit us today if you'd like. Meanwhile, we'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We've got another great episode. We're going to have Wayne Sanford back on because if you'll remember, Wayne is the credit guy. And we had a great episode of last year with Wayne Sanford on um, how to fix your credit score. And he is a master of fixing your credit score. Now he's back with another episode because there are some major changes coming to how the credit reports are presented and what things you can now remove from your credit. There's a new laws, and he's going to break them all down for us. So don't forget, please don't, don't miss tomorrow's episode of the Investing in Real Estate podcast. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you back here next time for another episode. And I'm Clayton Morris. She's muted. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. I'm here. I'm Natalie Morris. I'm still here. You know, it's, I predicted that too, by the way. I saw you hit the mute button. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I know she's going to have be still muted. There's something to do with it. Um, like the, there's a delay on my mute button. So I can push it. And then when I re-push it, it's, the, the, I have a short in this microphone. I'm mm -hmm. sure everyone's really interested in this. Right, right. She's got to shorten that microphone. Everyone. Right. Yeah. I think they may also wonder why I'm dressed for a luau. Because we're going out. <laughs> We have a date night. So, yeah, that's why she's dressed for a luau. <laughs> they're watching the, the video. <laughs> but we're not going to a luau. Like, why is she wearing really... We're going to a pig roast? We're not. I don't know what we're doing. It's actually, this outfit works in context, but on a podcast, not quite so much. Yeah. Like, we're going into New York City to meet some other fellow investors and have a great night. So, hey, right. everyone, uh, thanks so much for listening to the show. We'll be back here next time with another episode of the Investing in Real Estate show. Until next time, go out there, take action, and become a real estate investor and get ready for a luau. And go peel that banana. <laughs> <laughs>